All right, so in this video, uh, you will learn about the thermal equilibrium, okay, about the thermometers, all right, and then the temperature scale uh, in Kelvin and also in the Celsius, all right, <coughs> and then uh, some calculations what, uh, that involve heat flow, temperature changes, and changes of phase, and also how heat is transferred. Okay, <clears throat> so we have an example. Uh, so. Okay, <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's say you have um, a molten iron at 15 de uh, degrees Celsius. Does it contains heat, right? So we need to define, right, the term of heat and temperature. Okay. So you want to know whether both heat and temperature involved, or just temperature involved, or we can say that uh, only heat involved, but there is no uh, significant temperature changes. Okay, so we look at the macroscopic and also the microscopic level. Okay, so this is the one that you use, I believe, right now, almost every day, you need to use it, right? So we have the temperature, uh, sorry, we have the thermometer, okay? So in this uh, above, uh, thermometer so you have the usually you have the micro uh, mercury liquid inside that okay so this mercury liquid is used to measure your body temperature okay so how it works right in the principle that the, it depends on the volume of the liquid in the thermometer okay so when it um, touches uh, certain surfaces, right, which, uh, let's say, our body, or let's say, any other things, let's say, our hand or what, uh, whatsoever, then this liquid will expand, right, will expand in terms of its volume, right. So, these two systems, we'll call that having a thermal equilibrium, okay. If they only have the similar temperature, okay? So, meaning that the expansion in terms of the liquid inside the thermometer and also the temperature of our body is actually similar, all right? So, that's why we have that reading, okay? We have that reading on the thermometer in order for us to temperature on our body okay okay so we have uh okay so we have other types of, of thermometer right so this is what is we usually have right now today okay so it depends on the infrared radiation Okay, so this is called as a, a temporal artery thermometer. Okay, so it actually uh, measures okay the radiation, infrared radiation from the skin that overlies on the important arteries in the head. Okay, okay. Although the thermometer cover touches the skin. The infrared detector inside the cover does not. Okay, so basically, if you want, if you want to have a very accurate um, measurement, right, from the thermometer, so the distance from the infrared to your body should be, I mean, it should be contained, it should be covered, right, in order to avoid any significant changes due to the temperature of the environment okay 
So that's the principle of the infrared detector. Okay, all right. So when it involved with the temperature and heat, okay. So we can now enter the concept of thermodynamics, okay. Okay, so we have the zero law on of the thermodynamics, okay. If we have a C, all right, is initially in thermal equilibrium with both a and b for example you look at the figure down there okay and then a and b are in thermal equilibrium in uh, each other okay so meaning that okay so meaning that um, if c having thermal equilibrium meaning that there's another system okay C is thermal equilibrium of C is equals to A and also C equals to B. Okay. Even though they are in serrator, all right, and in serrator between A and B, the system A and uh, B will be having similar thermal equilibrium. Okay. But um, on the other hand, all right, if system C is, let's say, you look at figure B, is not connected to system A and B, meaning that it is having a different thermal uh, thermal level, all right? So, meaning that it is not having the thermal equilibrium. So, only in the figure, we have the thermal equilibrium in the system A and B only, all right? So, A and B are similar, but C is not. Okay, on the temperature scale, okay, so we usually measure in terms of Celsius, right? So, 7 degrees Celsius is the freezing point of a pure water, okay, and then is the boiling point of the pure water, okay? Um, <clears throat> all right, so we have the absolute zero, okay, absolute zero temperature so what is absolute zero temperature okay absolute zero temperature is at the minus 273.15 degrees okay which is uh, which is at the absolute pressure of any gas would become zero okay so that's the absolute zero temperature okay so meaning that uh, whatever gas it is, when it reach at zero degree temperature, okay, it will have a zero pressure, okay, at minus two seven three point one five degrees Celsius. Okay, so another than Celsius, so Celsius can be converted to Kelvin, right? So we have the temperature of zero Kelvin, okay, which is the extrapolated temperature at which a gas would exert no pressure, okay. So, mean that at zero K, the gas will have no pressure, okay. So, that means, all right, at zero K. Okay, is the absolute zero temperature. Okay, it is absolute zero temperature. Okay, so meaning that at zero degrees, okay, we have the temperature of pure water, okay, uh, at the zero degree is 273.15. K, okay, 273.15 K, okay, which is the temperature of ice cube, all right, at zero degree, okay. So that's the relationship between Celsius and Kelvin, okay. The temperature in Kelvin is equals to 
whatever temperature in Celsius plus 273.15. Okay, so this is just the temperature conversion. So basically just use the similar equation just, be, uh, just like before. Okay, so we look at the thermal expansion. Okay, so whenever there is a, a heat, uh, when there is a thermal, uh, when you give a heat to an object, of course, there will be uh, expansion. Okay, for example, we have a rod here. So a rod will expand, okay? So the expansion of the rod is given by delta L, so with, uh, which is the line change, okay? It depends on the, which is equals to the alpha, which is the coefficient of linear expansion, okay? And then we have L node, which is the original line of the rod, okay? And delta T, delta T is the uh, temperature change. Okay, so so you look at the rod uh, there. Okay, so we have initial temperature T naught, right? And then T naught plus delta T. Okay, then you have the expansion of the delta L, and then if the expansion is two times of the delta T, then you will have of the expansion of two delta L. Okay, so what is behind that, right? So what is the behind the thermal expansion? So it depends on the, actually it was based on the concept of the uh, molecular expansion, right? So we have the molecules inside the, the rod, okay? So this rod uh, actually is making distance within each other, right? So you can see like, they are having a, a spring within those molecules, okay? So when uh, we have the temperature increases, the average distance between atoms also increases, okay? As the atoms get farther apart, every dimension increases. So it's basically the, there is expansions, okay? Expansion between the distance of the molecules or atoms, right? And then one, cons uh, one important thing is that atoms does not increase in size, but it actually, the distance between that atoms, right, which is expanded, right, which is expanded. So that's why we can see a, a bigger expansion of the end of the object. Okay. Okay, so we have, we can look here uh, based on the graph, okay. So we call this as a graph of the spring potential energy versus distance between neighboring atoms, okay. So this is, uh, it is not symmetrical, okay, as you can see there. So we have U uh, times X, okay, so this uh, U is the potential energy of the atom. Okay, and x is the distance between the atoms, all right? So for each uh, energy, E, okay, the distance between atoms varies between the two values, okay? So as we can see, uh, the energy is keep increases, okay? If the energy increases, meaning that there is uh, a heat, okay, applied to the, to the object, okay? So the energy increases, okay, from E1 to E3. So you can see that the distance, okay, the distance between the atoms, okay, keep increasing, okay. The distance between the atoms keep increasing. So that's how it expands. But you can see that it is not linearly increases. Okay, it is not linearly increases, okay, but based on the graph, so you can see that it is uh, more like to the <coughs> poly poly polynomial expansion, right? <coughs> okay, so that's the concept of the thermal expansion. 
Okay, in terms of holes and volumes, right? So let's say you have an object, okay, with a hole, okay, on that, okay. The hole also expands, all right? So mean that when you apply to the heat, okay, when you apply the heat to the hole, the hole becomes bigger, all right? So the hole does not shrink, okay? The change in volume due to the thermal expansion, okay, is given by uh, delta V, okay, which is equals to beta, okay, beta, coefficient of volume expansion, which is equals to 3 alpha, okay. So 3 alpha is the one that you obtained before this, right? So from here, okay, which is the coefficient of thermal expansion, 3 alpha equals to 1 beta, okay. Then times V naught, okay, so V naught is the, uh, V naught is the initial volume, all right, times delta T. So you might be wondering why we have 3 alpha, okay, 3 alpha and beta. Okay, so you, so you can see that in a linear expansion, so you just, uh, you just measure about the line, okay. So if you consider a volume, all right. So volume usually have three components, all right. Length, okay. Width and also the height, okay. So you times three dimension, okay, of that object, okay. Rather than linear expansion, you consider only one dimension of the object, okay. So that's why you have three alpha. So it is like when you are measuring the volume and also the uh, line, okay? So it is actually you need to multiply that by three, three times, okay? So that's why you have one beta is equals to three alpha, okay? <coughs> so so this is the coefficient of linear expansion of the frame material, okay? So to get the beta, okay, to get the volume expansion, you need to multiply by 3. Okay. So, alright, so you look there, okay, so you just multiply by 3 and then you get, right? So as you can see that how it is, related okay some example that you can see of the about the thermal expansion okay on the rail track okay it has a gap between segments to allow for thermal expansion right especially during the hot days okay uh, especially in malaysia so we have hot days the segment expands and fill in the gap okay so if there is uh no gaps, okay. So the track, okay, of course, the track will be curvy, okay, it will be curvy. Then it, it will be not good for serving the purpose of a track. So if there is no gap between those, okay, so like that, okay, if there is, okay, let's say that if there is no gap between those, okay, because this rail uh, track needs to expand, okay, so, so like this, it will having a linear expansion, okay, rather than if you don't have any gap between those, then it will give you a curvy expansion, okay, due to the heat. Okay, so we have also the thermal expansion in the water, <coughs> okay. So 
So between 0 to 4 degrees Celsius, water decreases in volume, okay, with increasing temperature, okay. This uh, anomalous behavior, okay, legs freeze from the top down instead of the bottom up, okay. <clears throat> so you can see it, all right. So in the lake, so usually, so this is the lake, for example. Okay. So that's water. Say, okay. So when there is a winter, okay, when there is a winter, okay. Of course, the top, top here, will get freeze first, okay, before it's going to the bottom. Right, so the bottom here is not freeze. Okay, it's not freeze. Okay, so this is because of this effect. Okay, so between zero and four degrees Celsius, water decreases in volume. Okay, with increasing temperature. Okay, now whatever here happens that the temperature outside is much more higher, uh, sorry, much more lower than the the water, right? So that's why this one is first rather than the the water that locates bottom of that. Okay. Right. So you can look at the graph. So while water generates expense as the temperature increases, okay. So whenever we have a smaller temperature, okay, the expansion, the expansion will be much, much less, right? So you look over here, between, okay, so actually around here, so if we can expand here, the graph of, over here, it is actually like that, okay, something like that. Okay, so you can see that uh, the water is mostly dense okay, at 4 degrees Celsius. Okay, between 0 and 4, between here, right, the volume decreases with the increasing temperature. Okay, so the, that's the effect of the thermal expansion of water. Okay, so we can also measure the thermal stress okay so the thermal also have the stress okay so the equation that we can use is the f over a okay so f is the force needed to keep length of the rod constant for example and divide with the area the cross sectional area of the rod N equals to minus Y, Y is the Young modulus, right? And alpha is the coefficient of linear expansion and delta T. Delta T is the temperature change. Okay, so the expansion joints on bridge, uh, are on the bridges are needed to accumulate changes in length that result from the thermal expansion. Okay, for example, this one. So you have a okay, this car is on a bridge. Okay, on a bridge. So you look over here. So there is a gap. Okay, there is a gap between those. So this gap is designed in order to accumulate, okay, accumulate the changes in line. Okay, that result from expansion. Okay. So that's why you need to consider to having a gap, okay, in order to consider the thermal expansion of the object. Okay, uh, we're going to quantify the heat, okay. So how do we quantify the heat? Okay, so Sir James Joel, so you know that Joel, this Joel have a uh, got a unit defined based on his name, right? 
studied how water can be warmed by vigorous searing with a pedal wheel. Okay. So basically, this water will get warm. Okay. When you, okay. When you do the steering. Okay. When you do the steering. Okay. So this effect is what you can see, right? When you stir the the sugar, okay, the sugar inside the water, right? So you stir the sugar inside the water, and then the sugar basically will dissolve, okay? Why it is easily dissolved when we stir rather than we just pour it? Because whenever we stir, okay, the temperature is increases, okay? The temperature increase. Okay, so it is increases based on the amount of work done. Okay, so the same temperature change causes by steering can also be caused by putting the water in contact with some other object. Okay, so rather than that, you can also dissolve that sugar if you heat if you heat your drink okay so it is similar all right it is similar effect so it is actually the same work done okay in order to dissolve the sugar okay the calorie is amount of the heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water from 14.5 degrees celsius to 15.5 degree celsius okay so that's the uh carry okay so that's the meaning of the carry okay carry is the amount of heat required okay so we also have a specific heat okay uh what is a specific heat so specific heat is the quantity of heat okay which is defined by q required to increase the temperature of a mass of a certain material by delta T, okay? Delta T is the change in the temperature. So Q, the specific heat, is equals to MC, right? M is the mass of material and C is the specific heat of the material. Uh, that times delta T, okay? So C is the specific heat, right? Q is the heat required to change the temperature. Okay, so Q is the quantity of heat required. Okay. So the specific heat of water is approximately 4190 joule per kilogram times Kelvin. Okay, so that's a specific heat of water. So this is equals to C. We also have the molar heat, okay? So before that, we have a specific heat and then we have a molar heat. Molar heat defines by C, okay? So different from here, okay? So this is what is different. You have the MC, okay? So mean that Q equals to MC delta T for the specific heat. Okay, so let me write that again. So basically M C equals to N uh, C uh, N C. All right. Okay, so this, okay, this is the relationship, okay. Mass times the specific heat is equals to the moles, number of moles times the molar heat, okay. So that's the similarities, all right. So MC, equals to MC small, small c equals to N times capital C, okay. 
So that's the relationship between specific heat and molar heat. Okay, so molar heat equals to Q equals to NC delta T. Right? So molar heat of water is equals to 75.4 joule per mole times Kelvin. All right, so that's the relationship between specific heat and molar heat. Okay, so this uh, table shows you the specific heat and molar heat okay, for different materials. Okay. And then we have the concept of phase changes, right? So phase changes is meaning that so you are changing from the state of the object. Okay, for example, water. So we have in terms of liquid changes to the solid. Okay, say going to be an ice, or it becomes a gas, right? So gas when it is boiled, right? So it becomes a Evap uh, water evaporation, right? So that's the phase changes. Okay, so the phase change is the trans uh, transition from one phase to another. And then the temperature does not change during a phase change. Okay, the latent heat L, okay, is the heat per unit mass that is transferred in a phase change. We define during the phase change, okay. So we define the latent heat. Okay, the heat transfer in the phase change. We define that as Q equals to M L. Okay. Okay, if heat enter the material, okay, meaning that if heat uh, enter the material. Let's say from uh, water, okay. So sorry, from ice to the becomes water, okay. Then heat enters, right? Become uh, because the water, because the ice will melt, okay. So we will use plus, right? If the heat leaves, okay. If the heat leaves, then you will use negative, okay? So M is the mass of the material that changes phase and L is the latent heat of the phase change, okay? So L is the latent heat for the phase change. Okay, so heat added to ice at a constant rate, okay? So we look at the phase of the water changes. Okay, so from this graph, so you have the different temperature of the water. Okay, okay between um, minus 25 to zero, of course, okay, it is in terms of ice, right? Over here, it is in terms of ice. Okay, and then from here, from C to D, okay, so it is in terms of liquid, okay, and then this is at the uh, temperature phase changes, all right. <clears throat> okay, so here, all right, so you can see that this, there is a small, there is uh, but uh, there is a horizontal temperature over here, all right? So, from let's say from D to E, okay? This is where the action, uh, where the, where is the action? Okay, where is the action of the phase changes happens, all right? From uh, on the graph that has slope, okay, like this one, okay, it is when the water is warm, okay, when the water is warm, right, for example, here, the ice is warm, right, here, the water is warm, 
Okay, and then here the steam is warm. Okay, so that's the states of the of the changing phases of the water. All right. Okay, so during all of this period, okay, during the phase changes, all right, the temperature keeps constant. Okay, so this is where the phase changes happen. Okay, at the horizontal or this horizontal plot over here. So from here, uh, over here, B to C, B to C when ice melts to liquid water and then B to E where the liquid water will press to be a steam. Okay, so this is where we can measure Q equals to ML. Okay. Okay, during the step, okay, during the step when the this water molecule or the ice molecule is heated up, so we can measure, okay, Q equals to MC delta T because there is a temperature change, okay. So mean that we use this one, okay, the specific heat and also the molar heat can be quantified, okay. When there is a phase change, then the measurement is in terms of ML. Okay. Okay, we have the heat of fusion. Okay, so as you can see that we have a metal gallium, okay. So on your and right so we okay so this metal gallium is metal actually is melting okay so which is one type of metal that melts at room temperature okay so the melting temperature is 29.8 degrees celsius okay and the heat fusion of this is called uh, is 8.04 times 10 to the 4 joule per kilogram. So that's the heat fusion of this material. Okay, so that's the, the, the concept of heat fusion. Alright, so it has the melting temperature, okay, that is at the room temperature. And then we have the heat vaporization, okay. So heat vaporization happens when the water may be warm and may be hot. On, uh, may be warm and also may be cold, okay, at different days, okay. So this effect when you go into the swimming pool, right? So first of all, you feel cold, okay, when we step in into the water. But after you are, you stay inside the water for say one minute and then you feel warm, right? You feel warm because the water evaporates, okay, from our skin and it removes the heat vaporization from the body, okay? To stay warm, okay? So when we are going out, of the when we're going out of the swimming pool then we need to dry off immediately okay in order to stay warm right in order to avoid okay in order to avoid we feel our body our body cold right so that's the effect of heat vaporization okay meaning that the water evaporate from our skin so we should remove the heat of vaporization from our body. Okay, so we also have the mechanism of heat transfer. 
Okay, so in the heat transfer, the energy naturally flows from a higher temperature object to lower temperature object. Okay, so this is called as heat transfer. Okay, so there are three mechanisms of the heat transfer which are conduction, convection and radiation. Okay, conduction, when there are two objects uh, in contact uh, with, each, uh, with each other. Okay, the convection depends on the motion of the mass from one region of space to another. Okay, so depends on the motion of mass from one region to another. And radiation is heat transfer by electromagnetic radiation. Okay, such as uh, sunshine, okay. Okay, or in the microwave oven. So when you use the microwave ovens, okay, microwave oven, that you use the EM wave to heat up. Okay, that means the wave is heating up the object. So the convection, let's say you use the normal oven, all right? So it heats at the at the element, all right? At the at the element of the oven, okay, but the food is at the center of the oven. So you receive the heat, okay, you receive the heat that is transferred from that element so that your food uh, is cooked, okay. okay. So that's the three different way of heat transfer can occur, right? Okay. Okay, so for the conduction of heat, all right, for the conduction of heat, so this is in terms of when the object touches each other, all right. So the heat flows from high to lower temperature object, okay. So the object here okay so this one has higher temperature and this one has lower temperature okay so the heat is transferred from this object to another object to the right okay so the rate that heat is transferred can be calculated using this equation okay so h equals to dq over dt and equals to k a all right, so T, TH, tem the temperature of this object minus TC divide with the L, okay? The length of this rod used to transfer the heat, okay? So that's how you quantify the rate of heat that is transferred. Okay, so this is the thermal conductivity of some common uh, substances okay so here k is the thermal conductivity all right so this thermal conductivity is the thermal conductivity of this road mean that the capability of that object to transfer the heat okay when you have higher conductivity of course the the heat transferred will be easily done, okay, between the two objects, okay. So if you want to get the heat transfer quickly, so you use, you must use the object that have a higher thermal conductivity. Okay, for example here, if you use silver, all right, if you want to conduct the heat, of course, it will be much, much higher transfer the heat rather than you use a fiberglass or use a styrofoam, okay? okay? Or use a concrete or you use a wood, okay? So that's the concept of thermal conductivity. The higher capability of an object transferring the object, we have the higher measure of the thermal conductivity.
Okay, so the concept of convection I have already mentioned to you. So the transfer of heat uh, by the mass motion of the fluid. Okay. Okay, and then we have the radiation of the heat. Okay, radiation is by the electromagnetic wave. Okay, such as a visible light or infrared. Okay. okay, for example, we have the thermal imaging concept. Okay, so we have a camera. Okay, you know that this camera can uh, check, okay, the heat that is applied to the body. So you can see that the person, okay, the heat, of course, our body, okay, the heat comes from our body. So the water we drink as a blue picture okay so when, when it has a blue picture in that the heat okay there is less heat right so this object is cold right so there's a different temperature changes between the object so from blue green okay, from blue to green to yellow and up to red so the red which has the most uh i mean the the warmest temperature okay okay so the heat current in the radiation can be defined by the Stephen Boltzmann law, right? So the heat current in radiation is defined by H. Okay, you can uh, calculate this using the equation of A, the area of the emitting surface, times E is the emissivity of the surface, and we have the here, the constant, okay, the constant Stephen Boltzmann constant. Okay, and then times T, T is the temperature, absolute temperature of the surface. Okay, so this is the Stephen Boltzmann law, right, which measure the heat current in radiation. Okay, so the energy related by the Earth's surface is mostly infrared. Okay. And then the CO2 molecules at our atmosphere readily absorb some of the this infrared radiation and we radiate part of it back down toward the surface. Okay, so this is what we can see in our uh, climate change, all right, in the global warming effect. Okay, so we are at this year, all right. So where we have the very significant temperature change, okay. During the time over here between 90s, 90s, we have the least, okay. We have the least temperature changes. Okay, so this is what is worrying right now because the our globe, okay, our Earth, is keep increasing its temperature which is which keeps our earth okay which keeps our earth warming day by day right so this is actually the the heat okay the heat that is produced from our earth okay from the surface of our earth to the uh, to the environment, All right? To the environment, and then it will heat up the atmosphere. Okay. So when this happen, okay, so we can quantify the, the amount of uh, carbon dioxide, okay, carbon dioxide uh, gases okay, on the atmosphere. Okay. So that's why we feel much, much hotter today, all right? Rather than at previous 10 or 20 years back. Okay, so that's it on the temperature and heat chapter. All right, so let's have a break for 10 to 15 minutes, okay? And then after we're back, 
then we're going to probably having another quiz. All right, before we start with a new chapter. Okay, let's take a break for 10 to 15 minutes. So we're going to start around 9.15 for our quiz. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so there's no question. So let's have a break. Okay, we are back. So, I'm just ready for the quiz. I'm going to share the screen shortly. <coughs> okay. I'm going to wait for one minute, all right? So you guys should start joining the quiz, all right? And then we will start within one minute. So the quiz will be about the heat and thermal expansion that we just learned, all right? Okay, so there are six person right now. Okay, one everyone.
Okay. It seems like there's only 13 of you. Where are the rest? <coughs> Anyway, I'm going to start it from 10. So right now we have uh, 13, 13 students, three, 13 students. I'm going to come from 10 and then we will start. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, and one. So I'm going to start the quiz now.
Okay, I'm going to stop it within one minute. <coughs> Okay, congrats to A. So, who is A? Tell me, as I said before, please write your full name. Siapa, siapa A ni? Watata ke siapa? Patata. Saya Patata, Doktor. Kenapa Patata? <laughs> Sebab saya dah sikit hari ni. <laughs> Okay. Uh, alright. A ada A lah, ada F lah. Siapa A, siapa F? Saya dah ada F. I mean F. Uh -huh. A siapa? Ayu. Saya ada tu Alia. Alia. Alia A. Mm. Hey, pening pula saya. Macam-macam nama. Uh, <coughs> give me, give me a minute. Okay, thanks all. Right? Okay, so for this quiz, uh, I see a better performance from all of you. Okay, so many of you uh, got the questions correct. Okay. Uh, right, so so we still have about 20 minutes, but I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, spend for 10 more minutes. Okay. So let's go to chapter 18. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, thermal properties, All right? So before this, we discuss about the heat and thermal, and then we look uh, further into the thermal properties of metal. Okay, so in this chapter, so you will learn uh, about the relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature of gas. Okay, so, and about the heat capacities, right, and the speed of molecules, all right. <clears throat> so how do you want to determine whether it is a gas, a liquid, or a solid? Okay, so let's say, uh, how about the speed of the molecule in the frying pan? So when, uh, when we're cooking, then see that uh, the, actually the, the fire comes above, okay, that pan. Right? So how do the atoms in the gas determines the pressure and the temperature and pressure? Okay, so we will look into the properties of the matter. Okay, so we have the equation and state, okay, of the ideal gas. Okay, so we have the, in the ideal gas solution, we have the relationship of gas pressure Pressure times volume equals to N. N is the number of moles of gas, and R is the gas constant, and is the absolute temperature of the gas. So PV equals to NRT. Okay, and then the molar mass M is the mass per mole. Okay, so this mass per mole okay, is equals to M total divided with N, or the n total, okay, the total of mass equals to n, n is the number of moles times m. m is the molecular weight of the mass. Okay, so that's the relationship between those equations. Okay, so let's say we have a 
PV diagram, the pressure volume diagram, okay, pressure versus, uh, versus volume. So we see changes in terms of the temperature. Okay, so from there, we have the temperature T4 is the highest one, going down to T3, to T2, and to T1. Okay, so this is a Boyle's law. Okay, so whenever we have the increase in temperature, okay, so we will have a much higher curve, all right? So I say at the T4, then you see it is much higher pressure versus volume, okay? Compared to when we are at T1, where we have much smaller pressure and also volume. Okay, so we can relate the equation PV equals NRT for of the air inside a inflated vehicle tire. Okay, so in uh, the tire in our car, for example, when the pressure is about 3 atmosphere, 3 atm, and the temperature is much too high for the nitrogen. <coughs> okay, uh, the for the temperature too high for the oxygen and nitrogen to liquefy, okay? As the tire warms, okay, T increases, the volume changes only slightly, okay? But the pressure T increases, okay? So this is what happened inside the tire, all right? So when the pressure when the pressure is already at the highest level, right, at the highest level, and then the, although the temperature increases, okay, the volume only slightly change. Okay, the volume only slightly change. Okay, as you can see the concept from here. Okay, so relationship of P and V, all right. So pressure and volume. So whenever, okay, there is a change, okay, there is a change in the temperature, okay, there is a slight increase only on the volume, okay, because of whenever we have the temperature change, you can see that there is so little, okay, so little <coughs> pressure, uh, pressure change, okay, so that's the relationship, okay, of the PV inside the tire. <coughs> Okay, we also have the Van der Waals equation, all right? So Van der Waals is the equation that is uh, usually we use in the chemistry. Okay? So that defines, okay, the equation of the molecule, all right? Of the molecule uh, traveling, okay? Inside, uh, usually, uh, for the gas, okay, for the gas, okay, inside the gas substances, all right, so the model used for the ideal gas equation ignores the volumes of molecules and the attractive, attractive forces between them, okay, so we use the Van der Waal equation over here. So the Van der Waal equation, okay, the relationship also related to the ideal gas equation, Okay, so when we have, okay, so PV, initially we have PV in the gas equation, but here we need to add, okay, A N squared over V squared, okay, and V we minus with N B, okay, that equals to N R T. Okay, so that's the Van der Waals uh, equation. Okay, so... For this Van der Waal equation, uh, so the gas molecules are infinitely small, okay? So they exert forces on the walls of the container, but not on each other. Okay, so the force, okay, the, so the force uh, is actually obtained when the molecules hit, hit the, the wall of the object. 
So the gas molecules have volume, which reduces the volume in which they can move. Okay. They exert attractive forces on each other, which reduces the pressure. Okay. Okay, so when they have a uh, when they hit each other, so the molecule hits each other, they bang each other, so that will reduce the pressure. Okay, but when they hit the container force, it will increase the force. So so that's inverse of the uh, on the concept, all right. So reduce in pressure when it hits each other, but when the molecules uh, bang the walls, okay, it will increase the, okay, it will increase the force because it exerts the force from the container's wall. Okay, so for the non-ideal gas, okay, so we can see that the temperature will, uh, is not uh, really giving you the inverse relationship between P and V, okay? So we can see that there is a little bit changes okay, over there. So where at certain, uh, at certain area, okay, when there is a liquid, okay, when there is a liquid inside the gas, okay, then the, the changes on of the temperature over there will be a constant all right so when you can see that over here okay, the temperature over over there is uh, actually a constant okay from the point b to a okay at the lower temperature the material might undergo phase transition okay so that's why whenever we have the mix of liquid and a uh, gas, right? There's some uh at some moment we have the phase changes. As we learned before, when we have the phase changes, there will be no temperature change. So that is what is happening. Okay, when the gas is non-ideal, meaning that the gas may be mixed up with a liquid, all right. Okay, we have the molecules and intermolecular forces. Okay, uh, for any specific chemical compound is made up of identical molecules. Okay, in gases, the molecules move nearly independently. Okay, and the forces between molecules in gas varies with the distance R between the molecules. Okay, so we have the force, all right? So the force varies according to the distance between those molecules. Okay, so let's say we have these molecules. All right, so we have the electron proton. Okay, so that's uh, that's a molecule. And okay, so the separation between that we uh, we mentioned as R, which is the distance. Okay, and then the force. Okay, the force is actually uh varies whenever we have the difference distance between those molecules okay when the molecules are far okay, far apart the intermolecular uh, intermolecular forces so in that the interaction between the force that uh, actually try to pull uh, try to pull uh, the molecules each other are very small and usually uh, attractive okay so that's why when it is far apart the intermolecular force is very weak okay so that's why uh, it will can travel more freely when it is far apart let's say in terms of solid compared to in terms of liquid so whenever in solid you have a very small distance molecules all right so it is very very uh, attractive okay it is highly attractive 
compared to when we have inside the gases, so the molecules are freely to move according to the space. Okay, so when we have over there, the molecular process is uh, very small. Okay. All right, so I stop here for today. All right, we will continue <coughs> a bit more uh probably tomorrow uh, and also on thursday all right so tomorrow we're gonna have another tutorial okay all right any questions so far so remember that next week we're gonna have the presentation okay so Basically, you should know what you should do, all right? So basically, you can take any experiments, all right? Based on the concept that you learn during the class, and then you might uh, record that. Uh, uh, you might record uh, that experiment, but you need to present it lively, right? So that will be done during the lab time uh, next week. Right, if there is no question, then let's turn on your camera for your attendance today. I'm going to count from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 5, 6, sorry, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Have a nice day and see you tomorrow. Salam and bye-bye. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Welcome.